Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate new features into an existing design table in SOLIDWORKS. Let's do it. I'm gonna demonstrate this using the 321 blocks that I created in another video where we simply had holes with no threads in them. We're gonna add a thread and then integrate it into all of the configurations that we've already created. Okay, let's go into our design table. We can open that in two different tables, uh, in two different forms. I'm gonna open it up right in Excel because the spreadsheet has gotten big and because it's gotten big, it's a little bit easier to view and navigate when you have opened it up in Excel. By the way, in our previous videos, what we did is we, we looked at uh, hiding all of the parameter values and the parameter names so that we could get through this table without it being so gigantic. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then we also looked at suppressing features and adding the color. I'm gonna leave the color one in there for just a few minutes and I'm going to hide these. And we can see now that we're gonna add some stuff here and we don't have to go back and forth in the screen so much. The question here is, can we add a feature to the product that is not already in the design table? So the answer to that is yes. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna get out of our design table. Okay, and uh, I like to do these operations on the default, so I'm going to the default part. And let's just say, uh, for simplicity's sake, that we want to thread the center hole uh, that is the first hole that we popped in. So I'm gonna come over here, uh, grab this, come in here into our hole wizard, hole wizard thread, we wanna look at thread. Um, now there's a number of things we want to look at in terms of which thread do we want. If I look at the actual 321 block, uh, we have a 5 8 we have a 5 8 thread in there. Okay. So I've gone all the way through, but the truth is here that we are um, we are changing the size of our product in the design table from four inches to one inch to three inches and so on. So it's actually a little better for me to not manage this via blind operation. I wanna manage this via up to selection. In other words, I wanna thread all the way up to this face, which is what's going on. Then when that face changes, the thread length will also change. Okay, so that's great. We're gonna accept that. It's gonna, it's gonna finish adding that operation. And I have a thread on the center. That's what we wanna try to do is add this feature into the design table and have it appear or not appear in the products that we wanna have it appear for. So time now for us to little, give a little save on this and it says it needs to rebuild, whatever, we'll let it rebuild. Um, let me just save again in case something weird is happening there. Great, now we're gonna come into our design table, edit our design table and SolidWorks should actually tell us that there is a new parameter available. And I can see down at the bottom here that this is saying SolidWorks wants to talk to me for a second. And it wants to talk about the presence or the non-presence of the thread, which we handle with the state function. Okay, so we're gonna bring that in. We want that to be in our design table. And we can see that it is suppressed. It is not suppressed in our default, but it is suppressed with this S on everything else. So what we wanna do is we now wanna have another user input section, another user input thing. And what we wanna do is we wanna say has threads, question mark. And if it has threads, yes, excuse me, yes, we wanna set that equal to zero. And if it does not have threads, we wanna set that equal to one. And so let's go ahead and put threads in everything so we can go test that. And so on the state function, we will simply use the if then statements that we learned before. Okay, if threads are supposed to be present, then don't suppress the thread. And if they are not supposed to be present, do suppress the thread. Okay, that should do it. Pop that all the way down, jump out of this thing, and we'll see what happens. Threads are always a little bit more intense, uh, so it'll take a little bit more time for the part to load. 
which is why we're expecting a little bit there. Let's start with one that's easy, that, that won't be as graphically intensive. Okay, look, we should actually have a thread on this, and we do not. Let's see if this is the problem on all of them, and maybe I got uh, the logic backwards, and if I did, which it looks like I probably did, um, we want to go fix that. So we're gonna go into our design table. It's no big deal. This is why we, uh, iteration, right? Name of the game is iteration. Okay, so if there is no thread, it should be a one. Okay, well that's what's happening here. We have a one. So what happened to my logic here? This was if E1, oh wait, pfft, if E1, I never even said anything. There's no logic test here. If E1 equals one, if E1 equals zero, don't suppress it, otherwise suppress it, okay? So that was, a, that was a coding mistake, and now they've all become zero, which is what we expect the threads to appear. And there's my thread on that one, excellent. There's my thread on that one. And my thread on that one, let's go to the four by four, which would be a little bit harder for it to generate. What you have just learned is how to add a feature into a part that already has a whole design table. And when you want to add in a brand new feature, you just do it just the way we did. So that's that. I will see you in the next video. Thanks.